suffer both to grow until the harvest and in the time of the harvest, I would say gather up first the cockle and bind it into bundles to burn, but the wheat gather ye into my barns. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today's gospel is about the cockle, or in Latin, zitzania, or in Spanish, zitzania. Uh, we also use another word in the Jerusalem translation of Ireland, darnel, or if you're from Louisiana, you just say weeds. <laughs> yeah. But in Palestine, this was a very special weed that it looked just like the wheat. And so it was very difficult to, to discern whether that was a wheat or the nasty grass that was not the wheat, but it looked like the wheat. So when they grow both together, it's hard to distinguish. And notice that Christ's church is indefectible, it's holy as the prolongation of Christ, as Pope Pius XII said in the mystical body, that encyclical, Mystici Corpuris. But yet he promises us that his church will be laced with cockle. And so it should never scandalize us to such a degree that we lose faith when we see many members of the church uh, faking Weakness. The year is 298 AD. It was the birthday of the Roman Emperor, Maximian Herculeus. And because it was his birthday, they had weeks of festivities and gaiety reigning through the empire. This was their way of celebrating the emperor's uh, birthday. Now, Marcellus, the centurion, who was ranked a captain in the Legion of Trajan, stationed in Spain. This festivity and gaiety for him turned into a nightmare supposed to be a monolithic union of this legion, this Roman army. And belonging to this monolithic unity, he wanted just to serve his God and his country and be at peace. But he found himself having to avoid the immoral festivities that this entailed celebrating the birthday of the Roman emperor. So Marcellus was the wheat and all the other worldlings that surrounded him were the cockle. And the cockle would prove fatal for him. He left his post shouting as he left I am a soldier of Jesus Christ, the eternal king. And because of this, he was immediately thrown into prison until all the festivities uh, were over. And on October 30th, Aurelian Agricolaus, who was the vicar to the prefect of the praetorium, pass sentence on Marcellus, he will be beheaded because he refused to celebrate the immoral festivities. And there he was. He entered into the barn of Christ, a wheat of Christ. Now Cassian who was the secretary of the court 
witnessing the fortitude and love of this beautiful wheat, Marcellus, the captain. Seeing this, he was thoroughly influenced and he repented and he himself refused to write the sentence pronounced against the martyr because this sentence was most unjust as he discovered. And for this reason, Cassian was immediately imprisoned and the following December 3rd was promptly beheaded. And we also have in, inside this church couples who raise their children in the faith. And I've seen this with my own eyes. They would, they would, put, they would put calluses on their kneecaps. They would put a tremendous amount of strain upon themselves to pray their daily rosary. They would do all kinds of things of this nature. And yet, as soon as Junior turns 18, uh, he's out of there, leaving the Catholic faith, uh, choosing the world, choosing the things of sin, and therefore betraying the values of their parents, starting family feuds, and rebellion that crushes the hearts of many. The wheat and the cockle. We can't escape it. Whether you be in the Vatican in Rome, or if you be in a tiny little village with a little family of the domestic church, you can't escape the promise of Christ that there will be a cockle <coughs> lacing the wheat so the wheat, if you want to be wheat, you will have to prepare for suffering. Now, thanks be to God, the sisters are all wheat, so we don't have to worry about that. They don't have to worry among themselves. They can trust each other. But pray because there's little cockles inside the heart that get in there, and each and every single one of us, even though we be a holy religious we have many virtues and attitudes of faith, but also there could be some deviated human passions of pride, sensuality, and vanity. And so therefore we have to have patience with our own cockle within our own ribcage. We have to be patient. We have to pray that the Lord will also have patience on us and will not destroy us right then and there because he wants us to prolong ourselves to the day of our natural death so that he may be able to sift it out gently and majestically. I remember when I was a novice, they told us a story because they would try to get the novices to stay, not to leave. You know, <laughs> and so when you're so new and you're kind of wet behind the ears, uh, you got to hear these stories. So, so one time a novice wanted to leave the seminary uh, because he thought it was too hard or whatever. He had a lot of cockle inside his brains and inside his heart. And so the novice master, very severe. He was from the Canary Islands from Spain, so he's very pasha espanol. And he says, okay, brother, you can leave, but first you must go and make a visit to the chapel. <laughs> and so the brother was like despairing. Oh, okay. So he goes to make a visit before the blessed sacrament. And then he says, that was Father In. And that was Father In. In other words, he was a very fervent priest to this day. Because it seems as though the novice gave up all his cockle to the Lord. Place everything in his hands. He'll provide abundantly for those of us who feel the strength of the enemy closing in. Whether it be the exterior enemies 
or the interior enemies. St. Marcellus and St. Cassian will have the last laugh. Martyrdom, with its treasures gained in heaven, will be so desired and coveted. So therefore, let us not be scandalized if we notice cockle in the place within our own families, even inside the indefectible Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. In the society, because notice, and when we go to communion, let us ask our Lord to give us His grace of understanding that this cockle is meant to sanctify us, to put us to the test, to prove our love for Him, our virtue. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.